Hi everyone, Caitlin here with a special Conservation Champions video. Today I'm going to chat with you about the place on Earth with the most biodiversity, and I'm next to it right now. It is the soil right beneath my feet. You might be wondering what soil has to do with biodiversity. Well, the soil is critical to all of Earth's ecosystems. It is the storage system that supports essential nutrient, water and carbon cycling for all of our ecosystems. Soils also contain up to a third of all of the living organisms on the planet. I like to think of soils as the foundation of agriculture. So let's learn about what soil has to do with agriculture and biodiversity. There is a key process that plants do that we rely on. Plants photosynthesize, which means they store carbon and provide oxygen for most living things. Plants need four ingredients to photosynthesize. Sunlight, water, nutrients and carbon dioxide. We know that plants get the sunlight they need from the sun and the carbon dioxide from the air. But where do the nutrients and the water come from? Out of the soil, through the root system. Plants grow by grabbing carbon out of the air and turning it into energy. They then combine this energy with nutrients from the soil to form organic matter. This organic matter can be in the form of fresh green grass, vegetables and crops, sticks, logs, leaves, and of course, the roots. This release of energy and nutrients has created the topsoil here. The best way to explain this process is to say that the plants dribble. Why does the plant dribble though? And what benefit does this give the plant? Plants can't move around, so they need to access these nutrients from the soil around them. Plants have evolved to overcome the challenge of accessing nutrients in a few ways. Plants aren't the only living thing in the soil. In fact, there is a whole community of life in the soil with millions of invertebrates and billions of microbes. This community of life can create nutrients from the minerals found in the soil, but they need energy to do that. Plants provide that energy and in return, that community of life provides plants with the nutrients required to photosynthesize. When we feed livestock, what are the two things we worry about with animal forage quality? Energy and protein. Energy is the sugars, and protein is one nutrient. However, livestock also require a range of nutrients such as calcium and zinc. All life on Earth needs energy and nutrients. There is a diverse range of nutrients that plants need to grow, including phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium. When plants are growing in an unfertilized area, like this woodland area behind me, they are accessing that full range of nutrients from what's found in the soil around them. Let's explore how that works through nutrient cycles. We'll focus on nitrogen and phosphorus cycles today. If we take a look at the farm property, where is most of the nitrogen found? It's actually in the air. In fact, most of the nitrogen on Earth exists in the air. So there isn't a nitrogen shortage problem for this property. The challenge is getting that nitrogen out of the air and making it available in the soil. Now lightning and rain can play a role, but the main way to get nitrogen into the soil is through nitrogen fixing bacteria that live inside a section of the plant root called the nodule. That bacteria needs energy, so it lives as close to an energy source as possible. There's a specific family of plants that tend to have this bacteria hanging on their roots. It's the legume family, so soybeans, cow peas, wattle and the native scurf pea are some examples. All of these plants have this two-way or symbiotic relationship with nitrogen fixing bacteria. Lots of other nitrogen fixing bacteria hang out near the roots but not in them. They spend time in the dribble zone. To take advantage of this ecosystem service, we can plant native legumes like wattle or the scurf pea on our property and in turn increase the nitrogen present in our soil. And when we talk about phosphorus, where is it found in a farm landscape? Well, phosphorus is located in minerals and rocks. This means that it's mostly locked up and unavailable to plants. 
acids break rock phosphorus and make it available. But what creates acids in woodlands like the one behind me? Well, in nature, some microbes, bacteria, and especially fungi, make phosphorus available using acids. In fact, some fungi adapt to living half in the plant root, just like the nitrogen-fixing bacteria. The fungi branch out into the soil, and when it comes across rock phosphorus, it'll make the phosphorus available and take it back towards the plant roots. The fungi cannot grow and explore the soil without energy, so we have another symbiotic or two-way relationship with the plant. Having a diversity of plants on a property means that many ecosystem services are occurring, helping cycle the water, carbon and nutrients needed for our crops and livestock. By maintaining healthy soil that has a diversity of living things within it, we are maximising the opportunities that our crops have to gain the nutrients they need to make organic matter that we can then harvest as produce or use for livestock growth. What happens to organic matter, the logs or dead trees, over time? Well, after enough time, all of this organic matter breaks down through decomposition. The insects and that community of life in the soil decompose organic matter into new soil. This is why we need that diversity of soil communities to break down the different types of organic matter. This organic matter had available nitrogen and phosphorus in it and is now in the soil. This means that other plant species that don't have a symbiotic relationship can absorb those nutrients from the soil. Increasing soil biodiversity is a major way to increase the productivity of the soil to cycle nutrients. Good topsoil structure is created when that diverse community of living organisms works with plant roots, organic matter and nutrients. Many native deep-rooted perennial grasses create a healthy structure to our topsoil in New South Wales. This unique topsoil structure can't be bought or sold. It needs to be developed and cared for. Healthy soils produce healthy crops that in turn nourish people and animals. Landholders around New South Wales have moved towards understanding that food availability and farm productivity relies on healthy soils. Nutritious and good quality food and animal fodder can only be produced if our soils are healthy, living soils teeming with diversity. Thanks so much for joining me today, everyone. See you next time.